Hey guys, this is Austin. This is one of the world's smallest laptops. So GPD just finished up their Indiegogo campaign and they sent out one of their very first prototypes. So let's take a look. I feel Fractal Josh's ghost guiding my hand as I unbox this package. Oh wow. This thing is wrapped up. So this does not look like a normal laptop box. This is the laptop. Are you serious right now? Like that's, that's it. This is the entire laptop. Oh wow, it's actually aluminum. In fact, it actually looks like a tiny MacBook. Ooh, whoa. When I heard the words world's smallest laptop, I assumed something very small and plastic. It honestly seems like someone ran a MacBook through a shrink ray, and that is not a bad thing. Before I get too far into it, what else do we have in here? We have a USB-C to C cable, as well as a power brick, which I assume will use USB-C. I love this hinge. That feels so smooth. So what's cool is, is that while there are versions of this that run Linux, this guy is preloaded with Windows 10. Essentially what you're getting here is a full Windows laptop that will literally fit in the palm of your hand. Now it is a touch thicker than you might expect, but because of that, they're actually able to fit a pretty sizable battery inside. Something else that's cool about this is that while it is a seven inch display, it's full IPS and it is 1920 by 1200. And in person, this looks pretty nice. I don't really have a whole lot to complain about here. The keyboards are right. I think the thing that trips me out is not so much the small size, but the layout. So you've got weird things like having the space bar split into two different keys. You've got a lot of your punctuation kind of squashed together. And what's really getting me is that the backspace button has two keys above it and I constantly wanna go up and hit the delete key. But keep in mind, this is a very, very tiny laptop. You're probably not going to want to say write a paper on it, but for a quick little bit of web browsing or something a little bit more basic, I think you can get away with it. So even though it doesn't have a trackpad, you do have a little nub and it's not the most accurate thing in the world, but it's really not that bad. And obviously you have the touchscreen as well if you want to get something that's a little bit more precise. Take a look inside the box and we have the G6. Go Speakers on. also decent. So the problem is, is it's just a single speaker that's kind of on the bottom. So it doesn't really sound great, it's a little bit tinny, but I don't know, I feel like I'm willing to like forgive a lot for a laptop that's this tiny. Like, I keep freaking, I just, I was gonna say this again. that's so cool. Speaking of having a tiny laptop, there actually are a fair few ports surprisingly. So not only is there USB-C for charging as well as data, but there's also an HDMI port, headphone, as well as a full-size USB 3. Inside the pocket, there are actually pretty decent specs. So it has a quad-core Intel Atom processor, a full eight gigabytes of memory, as well as a 128 gigabyte SSD. Specs like that really aren't bad. It's what you would expect to find in a lot of budget laptops that are obviously much larger than this. Now, because it is so small, it does have a cooling fan, but even when it's running at full blast, it's not that loud. This guy is also rocking a 7,000 milliamp hour battery. That is not bad. So especially with specs like this and such a small screen, they claim around 12 hours of battery life, and that sounds about right. Now what really jumps out to me though, I keep going back to this, is just how nice the hardware is. Yes, it is a little bit on the chunky side, but when you consider just what all is crammed inside, it's really a pretty decent trade-off. It's interesting at how few compromises there are here. So yeah, the screen is small, and it kind of looks like they just pulled it right off of a tablet, but that's fine, it's a solid unit. And the same thing goes for running Windows. Sure, this might not be the optimal <laughs> Windows viewing experience, but with that high res screen and a little bit of scaling, it's actually kind of usable. Like normal web browsing, that kind of stuff is totally fine. Honestly, I feel like the keyboard's going to be the toughest part to get used to. I think if you're really into a smaller computer that I think you can get used to it, but I feel like all of my muscle memory just is not there. I'm constantly hitting the wrong key. I'm having to kind of like squish my hands together. It's fine, it's usable, but it's not really ideal at all. While you can get this guy with Linux, the idea that it can come with full Windows 10 out of the box is really cool. And with that Atom processor and small screen, yes, you're going to be slightly limited in say doing things like video editing on this guy. But for the most part, if it runs on Windows, you should be able to do it on the pocket. So with a single USB-C cable, not only can we get 4K 30 out, but we can also do 1080 60, although that's not 1080. The Scrapinator is a $50 PC. This totally works. <laughs> Dude, this is, I, I guess it's like, there's no reason why this shouldn't work, right? But it's such a tiny little laptop. My initial instinct is, of course it can't do that. Of course it can't do that, but it can. Time for some Minecraft. The most demanding game of all time. Well, if you're a seven inch laptop anyway. You know what's kind of cool about the setup is that not only are we getting a full display, but with USB-C, we're also charging the pocket at the same time. So essentially with one cable, kind of like a MacBook, you can do everything. Uh, frame rate is not great though. So maybe playing Minecraft on the external 4K display, not the best idea. Oh yeah, still totally playable. 
Now this is actually playing at 1200p right now. I mean, no, this might not be the greatest Minecraft computer in the world, but for something this small, I think it really does make a big difference that it actually has a nice display. I keep coming back to that. Like, I expect this to be small and cheap and not very good, but it's quality. Oh, I hate this. Oh no, this is terrible. This is terrible. <laughs> okay, so use a mouse. Number one rule of advice, use a mouse. That was really, really bad. So yeah, this guy can play CSGO. Frame rate's a little bit lower than I would like, but you should not buy this as a gaming computer. The GPD Pocket is a weird little gadget. It's not for everyone, but I've gotta say, I actually kind of like it. So what do you guys think about this tiny, tiny little laptop? Let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you in the next one.